Hello and welcome! Gameplay update for Dota 2, 14th of May 23, 7.33c. That's a lot of numbers. Now I'm gonna tell you what to expect. New patch for Dota. Uh, basically, the long of it is that Universal Heroes were, for the most part, a little weak and some of them a little strong. What they've done is they've increased scaling for Universal Heroes from stats. So this is the one of the most important lines from the patch notes. Universal hero damage per attribute increase from 0.6 to 0.7. So if you don't know what universal is yet, it's a hero that gets its damage neither from only strength, nor only agility, nor only intelligence, as has been the meta the last 20 years, as has been standard. Uh, now they get bonus damage from everything and not in a 1 to 1 ratio, but a 1 to 0 0.7 ratio. Namely, all of their stats together, strength, agility and intelligence, you multiply it by 0 0.7 and that's going to be the bonus damage you are going to be having. Now because every hero starts with stats, let's say you start with 20 strength, 20 intelligence, 20 agility, that's 60 stats. 60 times 0.70, I don't need a calculator for that, that's 42. So if your base damage is zero and you have 20 in every stat and you're universal, your base damage is going to be 42 at level one. 42 last hit damage. Uh, so that's pretty much what that is. So you're going to be seeing a number of um, hero balance changes that talk about uh, base damage decreased, but then the level one damage unchanged. I noticed this confused a lot of people, but basic, and it confused me because I actually skipped this line in the intro. I skipped this line right here. This is an important line. So basically what this means is Bane, level one, unchanged, just like they say. But for every level afterwards, when he gets new stats, either from items or just from leveling up, that means his base attack damage is scaling up better than in the previous patch. So this is a Bane buff essentially uh recently i played against the mid bane that still sucks i think even with this so probably don't do that so anyway uh you're gonna sometimes see this and here we can actually see that his base damage is also decreased but that means he has two more at level one and he benefits from the bonus scaling so it's a big bad rider buff with that in mind let's begin from the top Picking up Wisdom Rune. Oh, yeah. One more general consensus to the patch. Supports are getting buffed. Yeah, it's a good, good patch for support. And Aras are getting nerfed. I think those are the three big ones. Universal hero buff in scaling. Supports are going to have a better time in many ways, as you'll see. Uh, and uh, what's the final part? Oh, yeah. Aura items nerfed. So let's begin. Picking up a Wisdom Rune, the first one being worth 280 XP, barely half a level. Like if you're a level 4 support, you pick it up, you're still level 4. Uh, but anyway, uh, picking up a Wisdom Rune now also grants experience, aka it gives double as what it gave before, to the lowest level hero on the team. If they were the one that picked it up, it goes to the second lowest level hero on the team. Uh, so no more <laughs> anti-mage level 18 picking up the rune with the level 7 ancient apparition wishing that he could have it now yeah. now if anti-mage takes it they both get it so that's uh, that's not too bad observe reward experience bounty goes up 20 xp at level one if you don't know exactly what 20 xp is like uh, 20 xp is the xp you mostly get from summons in Dota 2, like some illusions, some summons, generally they have like a default value of 20 XP. Uh, and then two extra per minute. So let's say 30 minutes into the game, that's 60 plus 20, 80 extra experience. Not too bad, not too shabby. More reward for dewarding. Uh, when a stacked camp is killed, the player that did the stacking receives 30% of experience gained which is the same as they were already getting in terms of gold. That is really interesting and really attractive for supports. But it does big, beg the question, what happens when you uh, what happens when you are standing next to them? If you take a look at this, I asked the question, the 30 XP stacking bonus for supports in Dota 2, 
Does it mean if you're next to your carry when they take it, the carry gets 50% and you're sharing the 50%, you're sharing it with them, so you get 50, but then you get 80 because you'll have the 30 stacking bonus? Since the yield value at distance is 130, carry gets 100% and you get 30 at distance. And he said it does not. John said it probably caps at 30, giving you two ways to achieve it. But that's that doesn't make sense. Because if you're standing next to someone when you didn't stack something, you share 50-50. If, if I'm in a wave as a carry farming and the support is next to me, we share 50-50. If I'm farming a jungle and the support is next to me, we're getting 50-50. So if he stacked the camp and he's not next to me, I get 100, he gets 30. So if he's next to me, do I get 50-50 and he gets another 30, so it's 50-80? Or does it split? 50 80 equally aka 65 each or do you lose the 30 bonus because you're there i don't know how do you get 70 wait do you get 70 unless you get 70 always unless you always always already get 70 but then what if they're next to you then it's 50. or do, does the, does the carry get back 15 percent of the 30 that the support is getting because he's next to him but then why is it global you split 50 50 as before the support gets 30 of the carries 50 so 65 is what someone wrote on reddit the support gets 30 percent of the carries 50 65 yeah maybe maybe uh maybe it's split 65 65 that makes sense that could make sense there's many different ways it could be done but either way this is a really good thing and this this is one of the ways that Dota 2 tries to make something that's good for the team, also good individually. Because we've all experienced it by now. Carries don't want to take the Tormentor because they won't get the shard. And supports don't want to stack for Sven because they only get a bit of gold but no XP. They could be soaking XP somewhere. But now, when you help your carry, your anti-mage, your Sven, your alchemist, you're getting even more benefit, not just gold, but also levels, which is really relevant. Supports are very level reliant, actually. Uh, more than gold, even, usually. So that's uh, like a snapfire. She wants her level 6, she wants her level 12, her 18, right, for her ult. So that's, uh, that's a really nice change. Uh, Tormentor Reflect now always affects the attacking hero, regardless of distance, which could kill Enchantress if you do the Fountain TP impetus unless the healing in the fountain is enough <laughs> it could kill her yeah maybe maybe like i don't know five to ten thousand damage nuke kills her uh cleared multiple tree paths that led to dead ends and deceptive looking terrain heroes bonus attribute points can now only be skilled starting at six so no more like abaddon or juggernaut or anti-mage whatever taking uh early attribute points it's pretty rare but some people do it you get a shadow demon uh or in prison yeah and uh what's interesting is uh what's interesting about the tormentor is that i have been feeling bad about taking it because of the feng shui the the flow on the map being disturbed everyone needs to come together people show up late right people show up late and uh, they don't want to take it and you're waiting there you're afk and now everyone is occupying the same spot on the map the map is so big but now you're all occupying the same spot and you're fanning out to start farming and you all want to farm the same thing but you can't so like generally grouping up for it feels really really bad even if someone gets a shard and then sometimes you get like a bad shard okay enchanter shard it might be good but it's not good in my hands <laughs> I prefer like uh, someone else to have the shard. You should be able to veto out of it, opt out of it maybe. But anyways, uh, yeah, Tormentor may not actually be that hard of an objective because you lose map control. It's not uncommon for a team to take Tormentor and the other team just sneaking away with a Roche, entirely un uncontested. Anyway, Ursa can still solo it. Then let's go to the items. Lifesteal from all purchasable and neutral items on creeps has been increased from 50 to 
it's a nice uh, advantage for morbid mask and uh, those uh, those fangs the vampire fangs neutral uh, boots of bearing very strong popular item 200 gold more expensive bracers gets one to two extra damage pre post 25 minutes crimson guard costs 125 more and 75 mana to activate this one still doesn't cost mana to activate these are aura nerfs that are small but significant eternal shroud two extra strength punch buff shroud now also converts physical damage from spells to mana that's a big deal if we can say roughly physical damage is half of what you get then uh, you get twice as much mana that's a really big buff to an item that wasn't that good gave crimson mana cost but not harpoon that's fine it's the rs that are, like this one is stronger than harpoon this is a stronger item than harpoon you missed the line in the first section what what did i miss i didn't miss anything ah physical damage from spells only yeah physical damage from spells okay fair enough that's a very small amount still in legend no i'm ancient yeah damage from spell physical damage from spells got it like uh bristleback and uh omni slash above boots no i didn't miss this fairy fire cost decrease by five gold <laughs> recently i had a support that had like four fairy fires position four queen of pain with three four fairy fires <laughs> that's not good we lost pretty bad. Pavis now also blocks physical damage from spells. Which uh, is a buff. Uh, to an already quite good item. Pipe of Insight. Much less health regen. Two and a half less. That's huge. 5% less self magic resistance. While 10% aura remains. And the mana cast gets the force staff treatment. From 100 to 150. Another aura nerf. Uh, I think they correctly identified that it's a resident sleeper aura uh, patch for offlaners. If you don't take auras on offlane, you go like Brewmaster or Bounty. I mean, Bounty should build auras, but if you build Brewmaster or like LC, well, LC is over buffed in numbers, so maybe a bad example. LC and Axe are a bit different. Brew is different. They don't build as many auras. If you go proper aura boy, like Underlord, Bounty Hunter, um and some others you're generally the most useful to the team and uh all of them becoming less good and more expensive i think it's a good change slardar is griefing in the current patch because uh well well it can be it, like it depends on the flow of the game if he like snowballs and he counters his lane like slardar against anti-mage or slardar against ursa then you can win the game off of that but in like a standard game of mid-level pop where games always go late then uh ara boy is the safest way to play okay ring of health small nerf sentry ward gets a hundred range buff which will make it much easier to ward and de ward um yeah to de ward basically a uh, small camp and, and hard camp vanguard the much awaited vanguard nerf likewise health regen nerf from ring of health but also damage block goes down eight on melee which is mostly those that get it we've seen some razor vanguard with the bloodstone but that build is dead now that gets nerfed also is this enough eight oh there was uh someone that said they tested the experience changes the farming hero gets 140 xp and the stacking hero gets 182 out of a 280 camp yeah so my twitter question was uh actually on point wasn't it the carry gets 50 percent and you get 80 percent wait it's not 80. it's 60 so it's split 50 65 what 50 and 65 someone wrote that okay so that's look 
If I stack for you, you get 100 and I get 30. I'm not there. We get 130 out of the camp. If I'm there, we get 50, 65. So we get 115 out of the camp. So if I stack for you, I get punished for being within 1200 range of you when you take it. Well, I get more, you get punished. You get punished for my being there and I do not get adequate recompense for it. So you're not supposed to be there. Supports are dirty leeches, it is known. Yeah, well, that's not, uh, I, I feel like, I don't know if that's intended. That doesn't feel like a good uh, feature, especially considering it is not clear to people, right? It, this is not clear to people at all. It's very interesting. So, well, supports at least aren't stuck there, but now you should know that you're griefing your carry if you're there when they're taking a stack. Okay, dualist gloves. When an enemy is near, it can be uh, further away and still proc and get even more attack speed. So this is quite a nice item for an early fighter. Seeds of Serenity now gives regen. That's honestly a huge buff to an item that was already double buffed. They give like double, triple, quad, now quad buffs to this item compared to two months ago. It's a competitive choice. Spark of Courage was a shit item that was just worse than all the other damage items. But now, if you're above 50%, you get 18 damage instead of 10. If you're below 50% health, 7 armor instead of 5. This is suddenly a very good item. You can farm on it quite well when you're high health. And then when you get low, it helps you to stay alive. That's really, really legit. Trusty shovel. Whoa, more bounty runes. That's enormous. I don't know what the chance of a bounty rune is. Wait, let's see. Cobalt. Bounty rune. Mango. Cobalt. Bounty rune. Mango. What else? Is, there's one more, isn't, isn't there? Healing cell. That's it. Four. So you had you had a 0.25 chance of uh, bounty rune. And uh, you, you got to dig 1.2 times per minute. So you got 0.3 bounty runes per minute if you were on cooldown. And now... You get 0.375 bounty runes. Amazing. Twenty five percent more bounty runes, obviously. And uh, that is a lot of gold. That's lo that's so much gold. Dragon scale after burn burn damage increased. Dude, this item is already very good against uh, buildings. And now it gets even better. Anyone that makes illusions should get dragon skill. And then you send illusions to attack tower and it actually burns half the tower life. Maybe more if you go along with the wave. I feel like Eye of the Vizier is already one of the best for certain heroes. It did not need this buff. It's getting it anyway. More mana regen. That's crazy. So many buffed items. Gossamer Cape. Every four seconds dodge an attack alongside the 20 movement speed instead of every five big buff specialist array crack shot is now 20 bonus damage not 12 not 10 but 20 and we'll even try to hit heroes vambrace one of the most popular and strong ones eight stats instead of 10 and four instead of five vampire fangs spell lifesteal increased to 10 percent still useless on medusa but nice on some others defiant shell stats armor return armor like attack return armor now it's going to be seven armor instead of five enchanted quiver is already very good on some heroes ever since they added the bonus ranged attack even more now and vindicator's axe if you're silenced you attack very fast quite nice for uh mask of madness sven now even faster ascetic cap 
20 health regen. I always found this item a bit underwhelming. Gets better. It's uh, it's like a quarter of Tarask now. Endurance duration, five seconds of CC reduction. Havoc Hammer. This is a big one. 50% extra strength multiplier for the damage when you punch people around with it. It's crazy. Martyr's Plate. Magic resistance bonus increased 25%. Makes sense. This item felt... Maybe I haven't used it properly yet to protect the team. But at least individually it felt bad that this had 25, 20% uh, magic resist. When the uh, very coveted invisibility cloak also gives 20% magic resist. And evasion 20%. And invisibility. That was generally the preferred choice for many heroes. You could see it in DPC as well. Many people going for the invisibility cloak. Yeah, yeah, this is very spammable. It's like, what, 10 seconds cooldown? But yeah, plate is quite good. Now better self-protect. Uh, spell prism, fewer stats, very popular item. Uh, cooldown reduction, it's crazy. Stormcrafter, no longer has the dispel, of course. Some people still think it has dispel, it doesn't. It does have the double razor shard electricity that damages and slows people. Actually quite high DPS. Best on a melee to get in range. I think it's like six, 700 range. You want to be in range. And now 35 movement speed. That's quite a bit. Nice buff. Abaddon. At this point, I thought that they nerfed Abaddon, but they didn't. He's actually buffed. He gets more scaling advantage, as we explained at the start of this patch review. Alchemist. Minus five movement speed and minus 20 movement speed at his ult at level 6 and then 10 less at level 12 and unchanged except for this 5 at level 18 unstable concoction cooldown plus 2 uh, the way to play alchemist was to spam bombs on your opponent in lane he pretty much won every lane because the extra free point that he now didn't need to have in grievous greed it means he, he always has bomb and asset Whereas in, two months ago, usually it was spamming Acid Spray and Grievous Greed. Maybe one point in bomb, but now you were going triple Acid Spray and double Concoction. It was quite good, and you would spam bombs and it hurt. But this is a big nerf too. And this is going to follow a philosophy in these patch notes of generally dropping the wealthy he heroes. The heroes that accumulate wealth greater than others, which is uh, Alchemist and Doom. They're both going to get nerfed. Quite a big deal. And then also the 15 talent that gets damage from Grievous Greed stacks goes down. Ancient Apparition. Minus 0.3 intelligence gain. Which is uh, interesting. AA was a little underwhelming. He was okay, but he was a little underwhelming previously. Uh, before the big map change patch. But then apparently recently he had been sitting fairly well over 50% win rates at all levels. So that new change to his shard where he stuns people when they get hit by his ult. That was a big deal for him. As was the baseline damage on the W. Which cancels blink daggers, harasses people and even farms a bit. Bane. Better scaling. But better scaling and better level 1. Beastmaster. Base damage decreased by 9 which does mean a nerf at level 1. Here they didn't just give him better scaling, but they also made him start weaker. Hawk vision decreased. That's a good change. Bounty Hunter. Beast is quite strong. Bounty Hunter is very strong and coveted at both DPC and Immortal rank play. When people pick him at my rank, the esteemed rank of Ancient, there's still many griefers that don't really know how to play Bounty Hunter, but they just like tracking. They'll run into high ground, ward, 1v5 and die. Or they just sit back and don't track at all anymore. Because they don't know how to create the opportunity. They don't know how to wait and be patient. Too low IQ. Or they rush Aghanim Scepter and then Desolator. But they don't build any Auras, even though they picked him offlane. So there's a lot of bounty hunter griefing. 
very bad itemization at my level. He's one of the less well understood heroes, I have to say. I've even played against bounty hunters that didn't know that Shuriken doesn't stun anymore. They turn invis, I TP, they don't hit me, they shoot Shuriken and I TP out with a high five and a tip. So a lot of bad bounty hunters, but at the high level, he was coveted and strong. So a nerf is in order, a little bit he less health regen and slower track cooldown at level six and 12. Brewmaster, base damage decreased by five, AKA better scaling. Broodmother, better scaling. Chaos Knight, actually getting some big buffs. Two extra strength. I can't state enough how little that change looks, how relevant that actually is. It really is. Uh, Chaos Bolt, minimum damage, also a big, big update. 30 bonus damage at all levels for Chaos Bolt. Makes it easier to confirm range creep with it, if that's what you want to do. It's more damage straight up. Chaos Strike, lifesteal from creeps increase just like the items and the, the purchasables and the neutrals. Explain scaling again. Um, well, basically, universal heroes now get 0.7 damage from all their attributes together instead of 0.6. That's a global change. That means that they have to adjust everyone's starting base damage uh, in order to compensate for the stats that they have at level one. So nothing changes to Brute, but she gets better scaling after. Lifesteal extra from the level 10 talent and Phantom Illusion incoming damage reduction increased. So his illusions can, be can become uh, harder to kill if you pick that talent, which generally I do not. Oh, look at that. We've issued an Overwatch conviction against the player you reported. System is working. Okay, let's go on. Casino Knight, I'm going to play him some more. Chen, better scaling. Clockwork, better scaling and better level 1. And better agility, which is even better scaling. And much better intelligence, which is better scaling. Clockwork, mad dude. My little tin can is getting big buffs. I did find him to be a bit weak and less prevalent. And when I played him, didn't feel strong. This is a big deal. Just to give you an example. At level 10, he will have 4 extra intelligence. And 3 extra agility. That's 7 stats. Right? 7 stats extra. He already has 2 extra damage at that level 7 stats 0.7 times 7 is 4.9 at level 10 he will have 6.9 extra damage from before not bad it's quite nice quite nice crystal maiden and that, and that's not counting the armor attack speed and the uh, mana and mana regen you can get from it Crystal Maiden, Crystal Nova damage decreased by 20, by 10, by nothing, by nothing. AKA, she's completely unplayable now. She lost 20 damage, Crystal Nova. GG, go next, play another. Level 1 damage unchanged, Darkseer. Oh yeah, and Magic Rest. Nah, she's fine. Just a little bit of a level 1 and level 3 nerf to her, mostly. <laughs> Darkseer, better scaling. Willow, better scaling and better level 1. Dawnbreaker, luminosity. Same change, more healing from creeps. Dazzle, better scaling. Dazzle core buffed. <laughs> and uh, poison torch DPS buff, level 20, okay? Death Prophet was a bit low win rate, 45% or so. Uh, her highest win rate was in Immortal and DPC, but all other levels, the nerf bat had been keenly felt. How are they going to bring her back? 15 more damage at level 4 Swarm. Silence Radius, greater by 25, and Exorcism is 5 seconds longer, which is actually a buff and a nerf, because it delays her healing but it extends the amount of damage she can do with it. Doom. Bonus gold 
severely kicked. 20 gold less at level 1 from Devour. 15, 10, and 5 less. Yeah, it's mostly a buff to Exorcism. Uh, Aghanim Shard bonus damage decreased by 25 for Infernal Blade. Doom gets double nerf, especially where it hurts him, the money. Just like Alchemist. Doom, Alchemist were big winners of 733's map size change. And this is gonna slightly address that. It is quite a big nerf. For perspective, the Devourer cooldown is... The Devourer cooldown is uh, 60 seconds, always. Assuming that the first time you use it is at 30 seconds game time. Then after some time... After some time, after, uh, at, let's say at 10.30 uh, game time, right? You're gonna have used it 10 times, if you are perfect with it. It's gonna cost you 200 gold. However, gold has a tendency of multiplying. Because the stronger you are early, the more you can use that strength to increase your lead or to protect your losses. So while 10 consecutive devours from the opening of the lane all the way to a minute 1030 could give you 200 gold. If we're not accounting for human error in being late with devour, which we should account, it's not going to be 200, it's going to probably be 180. Uh, you know, normally you get... Oh, and devour keeps going up in level actually, right? You lose 20 per and then you lose 15 per, then you lose 10 per. So... Um, it's not too easy actually to crunch the numbers out here. Um, you could say that because the devourer does scale up, you would lose 20 on a level one devourer times 10, but then you lose 15 later, you lose 10 later. You're also gonna miss some cooldowns. So maybe you do eight devourers in 10 minutes and they are on average worth not 20, not 15, not 10, not five, maybe uh, something in between 12 and a half. Right, an in-between level, you're gonna miss eight. So it's eight times 12 and a half, okay? Eight times 12 and a half. Maybe it's gonna cost you 100 gold. Though, as I said, it does multiply a bit gold. You're gonna lose anywhere, I'm gonna say, between 90 to 160 gold, something like that, based on this change. Uh, so that matters, but it's not that big of a deal. It's not that big of a deal. It's kind of, it's kind of a small, it's actually smaller than I thought. And especially as the game goes on, it matters almost nothing at, at all anymore. So just a bit weaker early game. Uh, Vanguard nerf is a much bigger deal. And all the Aras, potentially. Though he does like going Midas, Octarine, maybe Shivas, but not usually Pipe, though he could. AC Pipe. He could do it. Crimson. But generally, Dooms are greedy. They want Midas into Octarine. Yeah, everything is a bit delayed. It's not a huge deal. Vanguard is a bigger deal. Dragonite. Five movement speed faster and a better bat. Better attack time. Earthshaker. Fisher range increased by 200. Cast point for Enchant Totem. That's how quickly he can cast it. 0.5. Stun duration from Aftershock goes up 11% at level 1. And less. But always 0.1 second stun extra on each level. Echo Slam damage increases by quite a bit. Radius is bigger, which is potentially an even bigger deal than this. But together they are actually very helpful for Earthshaker. Cooldown for Echo Slam decreased by a lot. 150 to 130 at level 1. 20, 10 and 0 second discount for the three consecutive levels. Enigma. Cooldown for Midnight Pulse decreased. That's the blue puddle, right? 10, 10, 10, 10. Gyrocopter. 5 movement speed. Oh my god. That's really fast. It's not Batrider fast, but it's fast. He's gonna break the sound barrier. He's gonna be really annoying as a support, chasing people with that barrage. 
Acorn shot slow duration from 0.35 to 0.45. Mana cost decreased by 5 to 20. Bushwhack damage increased by 15. 10, 5, nothing. Huskar, 3 strength increase. That's a smorf bonus, all right. 3 base strength. Damn. Invoker. Base strength increased by one. Cold snap duration decreased, but the freeze duration increased. Tornado gets an enormous, enormous 700 distance upgrade at level one. It will reach max of 3600, just like before at level seven. But at level one, it gets 700 bonus range. And linearly upgrade it in between. That's crazy. EMP. EMP shard pool speed increased. I didn't know EMP pools. <laughs> Did you guys know EMP pools? Increases damage for each point of mana drained by EMP and pulls enemy units into the EMP center. It's new? Oh, it's new. I skipped invoke a previous patch because it was also overwhelming. I don't know if that's happened to me yet. Chaos Meteor damage goes up. I feel like that was already kind of his most potent spell. <laughs> Chaos Meteor. You're going to be greatly rewarded for comboing and with the, uh, what's it called? With Deafening Blast. That's big damage increase. Three bonus damage for contact damage. And 15 extra. No, no, no hold on. 35 extra at max level. In Joker was other poop on mid lane at high levels. Yeah, I see. But he's decent as support sometimes. People were doing more by ignoring spells going right click Voker. Yeah. Yeah. His right click should honestly be uh, weaker. He should be all about the spells. I owe level 1 damage increased by 2 and better scaling. Keeper of the Light. I don't understand this base damage decrease to increase to level 1. Well, I've explained it twice already in these patch notes. Do you mind checking my Dota patch note update? Otherwise, I'll explain it all the time for people that watch the whole thing. Keeper of the Light. Blinding Light. Damage decreased from 100 to 85. At level 1. Same at 4. Radius decreased to scale into 500. Not always 500. Cast range rescaled f to scale into 700 instead of into 650. But it starts lower. So they thought it was too good at level 1. What, like one value point in it was too good. It did too much damage from too big of a radius from too far away. Now you're going to get punished with that range with one point. You're going to have to take more points if you want to do more with it. Just like Grimstroke's... Um, W and E feel pretty weak at level 1. Because you need to get so close. Cooldown increased from 22 to 25. Right. Same thing here. One point gets punished. Chakra magic cooldown reduction. One second less. Legion commander. She needs a nerf. She has big win rates. Right before I started practicing and learning her. She gets weaker. Now do I still want to? 0.2 strength scaling less. 2 strength less at level 10. Wooha. Actually at level 11. Bonus attack speed decreased. Um, especially at level 1. 15 less, 10 less, 5 less. Unchanged at level 4. Press the attack regen. 6 less. 4, 2, same. Life Stealer, Rage, cooldown decreased by one second in total. Movement Slow from Ghoul Frenzy, buffed. This is a big one. 10%, 15%. 15 is now 20. 20 is now 25. 25 is 30. And Infest, huge cooldown reduction. Minus 20, minus 10, same. So Life Stealer becomes much more dangerous in lane. More magic 
more debuff immunity, not magic immunity, more debuff immunity, greater slows, and more escape buttons. They didn't patch Grubby's favorite hero. W which one? Lina, Dragon Slave. Damage increased by 0, 5, 10, 15. Honestly, Lifestealer was pretty weak this patch because he doesn't flash farm as well. He doesn't scale as well. Light Strike Array, plus 10 damage at all levels. Light Strike Array damage, plus 20 talent. Health increased, 25 extra if that's the one you choose at level 15. Very tiny, tiny little love tap buffs. Tiny, tiny, tiny buffs. Lion, two extra intelligence at the level one. Bigger right clicks, more mana, more mana regen, more magic resist. Earth spike cooldown minus one second. Damage increased by five, 10, 15, 20. Mana drain, Aghanim short, magic resistance now gets the 80% treatment like Lifestealer and Juggernaut instead of the 50% treatment, which is PKB. Lone Druid, two extra starter damage and better scaling. Lycan, two extra starter damage and better scaling. It's buffs to Lone Druid and Lycan. Getting some animal love here. Plus two damage for the Rhino as well, the Magnus. Is it a Rhino or? Anyway, all the animals are getting buffed. No, nerfed. Magnus nerf. Never mind. Minus eight, decreased. Okay, level one nerfed, but better scaling. Marcy, base damage. Level 1 nerf, but better scaling. Mars. Spear of Mars. Actually, after buying like branches, circlets or whatever, they may still be fine at level 1. Mammoth, right. Mars. Spear of Mars. Minus 1 second. Cooldown. Aghanim short damage per second. Increased by 5. God's Rebuke. Bonus damage versus heroes. 5 extra. Mystic Snake. Yes. Welcome to the Grubsters. Schwoost, five months. Cooldown for Mystic Snake now scales into becoming 10 seconds instead of starting at 13. Now it's starting at 13 and then eventually becomes 10 instead of always 10. Mana Shield. You can now pick Mana Shield at level 1, which means you could be, not, you could be Medusa level 1 with 2 points in Mana Shield. Interesting. Bonus damage damage per mana decreased from 2 to 2, 2.5 to 2.4, 3 to 2.8, 3.5 to 3.2, and 4 to 3.6. So what this means, uh, what this means, before Medusa, what you should know about Medusa is that armor and magic resistance do not impact her mana shield damage at all. It doesn't matter. She doesn't have any reductions on it. The only reduction is mana shield. So you could be taking 500 physical damage from attacks and you could be taking 1000 magical damage from spells. Altogether lump sum 1500, no resistance is counted. She gets 1500 damage and at level four mana shield basically what it used to do is this divide by four that's it so she got 375 mana burned when she took 1500 damage from any source it doesn't matter if it's pure magical or physical it doesn't matter her armor or magic resistance bkb or not none of that matters just 1500 damage taken at level four mana shield she got 375 mana burned Right, and now she's gonna get 416 mana burned, which is, of course, as you would expect, a difference of 11%. So it's an 11% more damage taken on her mana. And considering that she also has health underneath it, where armor and magic resistance does apply, where mana no longer applies, we can roughly say that. In the mid to late game, health may constitute 10 to 20% of her survivability. 
maybe more like 10%, and mana 90%. So an 11% survivability nerf to her mana is roughly a 10% survivability nerf. Because of this. Bigger, perhaps, is the bonus mana decreased per mana shield level. Especially her level 1. Level 1 unpicked mana shield had already given her 200 bonus mana. So we always started with snake, not with shield, because you couldn't. Assuming you still start with snake and not with shield, you are going to be dropping 200 mana. The value for that mana unpicked was a double multiplier, which is as if you had 50% armor and magic resist. A value that no hero has at level 1, of course. It was very good. So, the 200 damage taken at level 1 required 400 damage taken to burn the 200 mana. Right? So, basically, she loses 400 effective health immediately at level 1. And then if you pick it once, you would have 225 at the 2.5 multiplier. Which was... 562 extra EHP. Now you will have 120. 440 less. 400 less, 440 less. And then eventually a 4 times multiplier on 300. It gave you 1200 EHP. Now 720 which is 480 less. So we can say 400 less, 420 less, 440 less, 460 less, 480 less, most likely. Um, so that's a pretty big deal. And I think she's still good regardless, which shows you how crazy she was. But the biggest difference is level one. She is much less survivable at level one. There's also no shenanigans available at level one, such as uh, Diffusal Blade, Right? There's no Diffusal Blade yet. Of course, Diffusal Blade does 40 mana burn. And uh, normally, 40 mana burn needed 200 damage because of the 4 times multiplier. That meant that Diffusal on Medusa works as 200 pure damage while she still has mana, which makes it as good as a Daedalus on a hero like Sven. Uh, not counting anti-mage or like uh, weaver with mana break or something. So uh, diffusal relatively gets weaker because the multiplier is smaller. Relatively. But it's still the best damage item you can get for its cast when going up against Medusa. Better than Monkey King Bar. Uh, depends if she has butterfly. Let's say she has no butterfly. Better than Monkey King Bar, Divine Rapier or Daedalus for its cast relation to what you're getting out of it like a, a faceless void is gonna go power treads mask of madness maelstrom bkb and if medusa is his target diffusal fifth not uh not scotty uh, not daedalus uh not mjolnir yet you're gonna go diffusal fifth item generally if medusa chronosphere is your target of course, there, there are many ways to roam. You can play it all kinds of different ways. But Diffusal was an important item for Faceless. We saw this in uh, DPC when uh, a team took, a, took on Medusa uh, with Faceless. If you can survive that long to scale him, because Medusa levels up quite fast. The snake cooldown also is a big deal. You were spamming this baby. Still, I think she's still valid. But she's going to be more paper-like in lane. And she cannot make use of Tango. Clarities can be interrupted. And Mangoes are in short supply. So it's not easy. Maybe Medusa will need to pick up a little bit more mana regen. Or her support needs to get Basilius. And that's going to cost you. And it doesn't change the degree to which she can be bursted. Mirana. Level 1 damage. Mirana level 1 gets nerfed a lot. I think that's deserved. Her scaling still does get better, of course. Like, Mirana level 10 will still do more damage in the new patch than in the previous patch. Because of all the stats she gets from leveling. But her level 1 is weaker. Naga Siren. 
nerfed. Mirror damage. Oh man. Come on. So undeserved. This was one of my favorite levels. Like this was a big power spike level for me. Level 15. 10 and 15 are really huge for her. It's Riptide damage, mirror image damage. You can start to murder people. Yeah, what a pity. From shore to sea. Nature's Prophet. Cooldown for teleportation. Minus 5 seconds. Stacks. Max stacks. He gets damage after teleporting or something, right? I forgot exactly what. Uh, Wrath of Nature. More damage. Nyx Assassin. Scaling. Actually gets better. No way. For real hand to God. There's no way they're buffing Nyx. Nyx has a win rate over 50% at all levels. He's one of the most frustrating heroes to go up against. As he can fully burst you from invisibility. While stunned. With almost no interaction available on your part. His physical uh, damage uh, scales better now. He just becomes better and better as the game goes on compared to before. However, they do address... 2% spell amp nerf. Are you gonna survive it now? No one cares attack damage on Nyx? Of course you care. Sentries were buffed. Yeah, that does help against all invis heroes. Uh, people do care about attack damage on Nyx. I saw Tapson go for Nyx auto attack style. <laughs> but anyway, keep in mind that the way that he activates his combo is with an auto attack. And it is an auto attack with a lot of bonus pure damage. I know. I know. But that still counts as base damage. It still makes his burst bigger. And that first attack, that first physical attack he does, will still get multiplied by Mind Flare. So don't underestimate little bits that then get multiplied. Nyx overall, I would say, got buffed despite this. Which is undeserved and feels to me tone deaf. On this one, I think uh, I think they missed the board on this one. XDD Nix, exactly. Oracle, it's been quite good. Cooldown for Fortress and increased, especially at level one. I think probably des deserved. Uh, mana cast for Fates Edict also increased. Uh, 15, 10, 5, 0. A little bit weaker at level one, three, and five. Pangolier, base damage decreased by a lot. They don't know what to do with Pango, huh? Every patch, nerf, buff, nerf, buff. This hero is too prevalent. Nerf. Oh, we don't see him as much. Let's get back to Pango meta. They buffed him last patch. Now, nerfed again. Though he scales better, but level 1 is weaker. Swashbuckle. Dash range decreased by a lot. Wow. His early levels are getting nerfed a lot. Like, his, a level 20 Pango is better than it was. But level 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8? Weaker. And chance for lucky shot 17%. Alright, I, I gotta clap for that. Phantom Lancer. Spirit Lance cooldown at level 1, 3, and 5 if you spam it. I don't think generally you do spam it. You could, I guess, in a lane that you think you can get kills with it. I usually get a lot of E. But anyway, whenever Spirit Lance is taken, 3, 2, 1, less cooldown until finally reaching its normal amount again. Phoenix, better scaling. Primal gets more intelligent. Level 11 Primal has three more intelligence. Uproar, bonus armor per stack increased by one. Pulverize, 25 bonus damage. Uproar per stack, also plus two. Razor, agility gain. Two extra agility at level 11. One extra armor baseline. And more move speed from Storm Surge. Uh, 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 it does make his laning better to have one extra armor. The movement speed helps quite a bit. Especially at level one, it's a big change. 
I would still only take Razor if I was very confident that it was working as a counter pick. He does not feel like a universally pickable hero. Ricky, base armor negative one. Uh, keep in mind, Ricky is very, very good right now. At least in pubs. 53% win rate at all levels. So, nerf is in order. One armor. It's a nice nerf. Welcome to the Grubsters. Ninja Lop 12. Two months. Ninja Lop. What up, dude? Thanks for the sub. Aghanim Shard. Armor reduction. Jesus, that scared me. It scared me a bit, too. And I just chose that... Uh, that sub video. Uh, Aghanim Shard armor reduction minus one. They want to keep that. You can't force staff this dude. Balancing didn't used to be around pop stats. Uh, well, it needs to be a mixture of both. And it's always been that way. The casual base enables the pro base to have an audience. And the pro base enables the casual base to look at an example. Both are important hubs of a healthy game. You should balance around pro, but if you can at all balance around casual without harming pro too much, you should consider doing that. It's always been that way. Blink strike, base charge restore time increased. One extra second to level two, two extra at level three, three extra at level four. Sand King, better scaling. Shadow Friend, more shadow race damage from a 15 talent. Silencer. It's gonna be more expensive. You stupid boy. Five bonus mana per Q. Damn. Skywrath. Minus two intelligence. That's a Skywrath buff against anti mage. No, it's a nerf. Skywrath nerf. Uh, Slark. Aghanim Scepter distance decreased by 100. It's a good nerf. I thought Slark would get more nerfs. Snapfire. Better level 1 and better scaling. Sniper. Now provides 200 attack range when active. Plus 200. Didn't it already give? Why does it say now provides 200 attack range when active? Oh. It gave 100, 200, 300, 400 passively per level, and now another 200 extra while activating. That's crazy. So, okay. Sniper's range, 550. It becomes 950. With Dragon Lance, 1050. Hurricane Pike is 150, right? So he can have 1100. Then you add Enchanted Quiver, 1175. Or let's say Grove Bow, 1200. 1200 was his max previously, unless an ally had Telescope, 1300. Now he could have 1500 with Grove Bow and an ally Telescope, 1500 range. That's half of his headshot. That's half of his assassinate range. <laughs> He's a real sniper now. I remember when I was a herald. No, pre-herald even. When I was playing on ranked. Uh, I was playing sniper. No, I, I was playing against sniper. And I kept hearing a duck. And I don't know why I'm dying. I always desperately ask Chad. What's happening? Quack, quack, quack. <laughs> Welcome to the Grubsters. Is her own eight months. All the love for the mothers. We don't deserve them. Ice her own. Uh, thank you, dupe. Did I say dude or dupe? Dude. He gets plus 100 on 25. Right, so he could be 1600 range. Sniper buff. Uh, seems somewhat deserved. Thank you, dupe. Uh, three extra strength at level 11. Mana cast for charge of darkness minus 20. Can no longer target BKBers unless you have the scepter. Oh, <laughs> you could just go there anyway. 
Like they won't get stunned, but you could still use them to run. Status resistance increased by 5%. Greater bash cooldown decreased. This is a pretty big deal. Wow. More stuns if you get lucky, which you will. Movement speed as damage increased. Uh, Nether strike cooldown reduction big time. Big, huge, enormous 30 second cooldown at level 18. That's going to be fun. Jesus. Techies. It's better scaling. Templar Assassin, 5 movement speed. Oh my god, she's the best carry now. And 30 bonus damage at level 18. Or whatever, whenever you take it. 16, whatever. Uh, Terrorblade. Can no longer target debuff immune enemies with Sunder. Was it? You could take the life of an ally and they don't lose it? Or they don't uh, lose their health? I wonder. Yeah? That's crazy. <laughs> Timbersaw. A better level 1 and better scaling. Timbersaw buff. Underlord. Plus 100 mana for Fiend's Gate. Firestorm radius minus 25 from the talent, which you almost always take. This one almost always take. CDR. So one second longer cooldown. 25 smaller radius Firestorm and 100 mana on Fiend's Gate actually kind of a big deal sometimes and underlord is also getting nerfed to vanguard crimson mana cost vanguard health block and regen pipe magic resistance and uh health regen and one more activation cost on something yeah underlord has pretty good win rate he's pretty much the best offlaner right now very sought after in dpc I'm winning with him all the time. I mean, if I'm winning with him all the time, that's a problem. But I was winning before the patch as well. But I'm basically 6-2 since the patch. But then I was winning before with that as well. Um, and then, uh, yeah, he, he is... Um, he's better the lower level you are. So I guess I'm low level. Yeah, I, I am... I'm a herald smurfing an ancient with him. <laughs> See? It gets worse as you get higher. Uh, Vengeful. Better scaling and better level 1. Venomancer. Be um, better scaling, but much worse level 1. Damage. Visage. Better level 1 and better scaling. Void Spirit. Much worse level 1, though he still has the better scaling, which is the same for every universal hero, but I'm still saying it just so that you get it. Ether Remnant. Damage decreased by 10 at all levels. Resonant Pulse. Damage decreased by 15 at level 4. Mana Regen decreased 0.25 for the talent. Astral Step Crit decreased 20%. Wind Ranger. Better scaling. Winter Riven. Better scaling and a lot better level 1. Damage. Vampiric Spirit gets the Lifesteal treatment. And finally, Zeus, which I did not skip. Mana cost decreased by 5 for Arc Lightning. Zeus, of course, is in the dumpsters right now. Sometimes knowledge is power, but sometimes knowledge is Pepega. People have been playing so much Zeus auto attack build that his win rate dropped from whatever it was to 44%. Finally, everyone that tried to be cool with Zeus and try to run auto attack lightning hands build has stopped playing him and now only real Zeus players are playing him again. So his win rate recuperated from the 44 post patch to 48 automatically without any other changes happening to him. So now it's at 48, still due for a small little buff. And he gets a 5 mana buff. Thunder God's Wrath damage increased by 50 at all levels. That's his ult, isn't it? That's crazy. Lightning Bolt Mini Stun, plus 2 seconds at level 20. Arc Lightning Current Health as damage increased by 2%. That's the patch. Biggest winners. Definitely uh, Dawnbreaker. Now, biggest winner, Chaos Knight. 
Earthshaker, Invoker, Lifestealer, and Spirit Breaker. The biggest losers, Medusa, Alchemist, and Doom, maybe, and Underlord. Even as the biggest loser, Medusa may still beat the biggest winner. <laughs> We will see. Let's jump into the games. Hope you enjoyed this patch preview. Now we're going to review it with live hands-on experience. It's up to the ground. 